Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a value from an open form using the forms form name field name notation in your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Cole from Chandler, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Cole says, I'm using your invoicing template, which is very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. When you click to add a new invoice for a customer, is there a way to have the customer combo box automatically set to the currently open customer on the customer form? Yes, Cole, that is certainly possible if you know how to get a value from another open form. Let me show you how. So here's a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. I'll put a link down below. Cole was referring to my invoicing video, which is also free. I'll put a link to that down below as well. And in that video, if you open up a customer, click on orders, we create this order entry system. And you can print out a nice invoice right there. But the problem is, if you go to create a new order, notice there's nothing here in the customer combo box. So it would be nice if this combo box could get its default value from the currently open customer on the customer form. Well, how do you do that? Well, let me show you another trick first. It's a little easier. Let's say I want to run a query showing all of the customers from Florida. Now, I've shown in my other videos how you can do a parameter query where the user can type in the state every time they run the query. But let's say nine times out of 10, I'm in Florida. So most of my customers, if I was a local business, you'd think would be Floridians. So how about on the main menu, I put a little text box where Florida is the default value. I can change it if I want to, but then when I click the button to run the query, it gets that value from the main menu. All right, so let's right click design view and I'm gonna create a text box right here. So design, grab a text box, put it right here on the main menu. All right, I'm going to slide over the label and let's make that white so we can actually see it. Let me open this up permanently, there we go. Let's change this to white. I'll change that to state. And we'll call this guy, let's call this state filter. Default value, let's go over the data tab. Default value is going to be FL inside of quotes. Okay, so now if I close this, save it, and open up my main menu again, I've got a little text box there with the default state of Florida in it. Now, how do we refer to this box? The way that you refer to a value on an open form, the form has to be open, is forms bang, that's the exclamation point, remember that? I got a whole video on bang versus dot, go watch that. Forms bang, form name, bang, field name. So in this case, the name of that text box is forms main menu F state filter. Okay, that's the name of the text box, the name of the form, and that's part of the forms collection. So now, how do I go about getting that? Well, we can use that name as criteria in a query. Now, if you have never done query criteria before, go watch my query criteria video again. I'll put a link down below in the links section, right? Query criteria. So let's create a new query, bring in the customer table, and I will go customer ID, first name, last name, and bring in the state. Now for the state's criteria, let me widen this out a little bit. Let's set this equal to forms, exclamation point, main menu F, exclamation point, state filter. There it is. Let's save this as my customer state Q. And now let's run it. And there you go. There's customers just from Florida because it got the criteria from that form in the background. That's the main menu form, state filter. Now if I close this, and I come in here and change this to New York, now after you type in New York, make sure you hit tab, because you have to move off of that field for it to save the value in the form. If you don't, it won't change it. All right, now if I run customer state queue, look at that, just the New Yorkers. All right, close it. I think we have someone from Texas too. Texas, tab, and then run it. And there you go. You could also do it with a button, right? Design view. Give me a command button, drop it there. We're going to go to miscellaneous 
run query, next, which query, customer state queue, next, and then whatever you want here. We'll just go with, uh, we'll go with text, run query, or open customers. All right, next, give it a name, open customer button, whatever you want to call it, and then finish. All right, so there's my button to open up the customers. Save it, close it, open up your main menu again, and now open customers. There's your Floridians. Close it, type in New York, open customers, there you go. Do you have to hit tab this time? No, because clicking on the button moves off of that field, so it's essentially the same thing. All right, change this to Texas, open customers, there you go. Okay, so that's how you get the value from the open form. Now, how do we apply this to our order form? So when I go to a new record here, this combo box gets the default value. Well, right click, design view, open up the properties for the combo box on the data tab, find default value, and say equals, this time you have to put an equals in front of it, equals forms, may, uh, not main menu F, that's the other one, customer F, exclamation point, customer ID. All right, give me the customer ID off of the customer form, and it, it has to be open. If it's not open, don't worry, it'll just still be blank. Okay, save it, close it, close that, close that, just make sure, I'll shut everything down, reopen it. All right, go to orders now, go to a new record, and look at that, I'm the default value. See that, because it's getting it off of the open form. In order for this to work, the customer form has to be open. If you go to a different customer, let's go to uh, Jean-Luc Picard, orders, and he doesn't have any orders, so the first one is a new order, and there he is. See that? That's how you get the default value off of another form. Now, there is one problem with this method, and the problem is, technically, since this says new up here, there's no value in this order ID, so there's nothing to link to down here. If I start typing in a product and hit tab or go to the next record, you can see here it's putting products in, but if I leave it and come back to it, there's nothing in the table. Why? Because if you look at the order table, okay, we didn't enter a record in here. So we have order details now with no order ID. Okay? The way we can fix that is at the table level, come into the order table, right? Design view on the order table. The customer ID, the default value is currently set to zero. Get rid of that. This is going to force the user to have to put customers in. All right. Make required yes. Save that. That just says data rules have changed. That's okay. Now go to the order detail table, design view. Make sure the order ID, get rid of the zero there, and set the required value to yes there as well. Now you can't put an order in without a customer. And you can't put order details in without an order ID. So now if I go to a customer, go to an order, go to a new order, if I come down here and start putting values in, look at that. You must enter a value in the order ID field. In other words, it's saying you can't put a record down here without starting a record up here. See? So you'll have to hit escape and do something up here to initiate a new record. Okay? If you just pick the customer manually, that'll do it, or put something in the description, right, new PC, anything up here to initiate this ID to get set, okay? It's not the most elegant solution, but it works, okay? In the extended cut for members, I'll show you a more elegant solution, something that works a little better than just having the user get that error message, okay? But there you go, Cole. That should answer your question how to get a default value in this combo box. If you want to learn more about getting a value from an open form, I cover a lot more in the extended cut for members. We will create a more elegant solution instead of just throwing an error message up in the user's face if they try typing in a line item without first assigning an order ID. We'll check to see if that order ID is set or if it's null. And if it's null, then we'll create one. All right, automatically with a little bit of VB code, tiny little bit. We'll learn about the before insert event. Then I'll teach you how to get a value from a subform. That total on the bottom down there where the arrow is, right, that $12, that's in a subform. A little bit different trick, 
some different nomenclature if you want to get a value from an open subform. All right, it's a little more complicated, but I'll show you how in the extended cut. And we'll do a little tiny bit of error handling right, with an on error go to statement. All that's covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And I also cover a lot more with the forms, form name, field name, notation in my Access Expert 2 class. It's a full course, hour and 25 minutes long. Covers lots of other stuff too. Database normalization, working with the relationships window, global relationships, referential integrity, cascade update and deletes. Lots of stuff in that class. Access Expert 2. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.